I'm Darren Klaas. I'm an interventional radiologist at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. And I'm talking to Interventional News at Circe 2018 in Lisbon. Snuffbox technique was developed many years ago by interventional cardiologists in Iran and Russia. And they published a lot of data initially on snuffbox access, but it wasn't available in Western journals. And it was only in 2016, early 2017, when an interventional cardiologist, Ferdinand Kimene, who is the father of radial intervention in interventional cardiology, started to use the technique. And since he started to use the technique, the, the technique has almost taken on a life of its own through social media more than anything else. Uh, I chatted to Dr. Kimene a few weeks ago, and he said what took him 25 years to go from the groin to the wrist has taken a year with social media to go from the wrist to the snuff box. It's a technique where we access the distal aspect of the radial artery just after it branches into its superficial palmar arch and then into the artery to the princeps pollicis. And the whole concept of distal radial access is to access the artery distal to the origin of the superficial palmar arch and proximal to the origin of princeps pollicis. And the reason for that is because in the snuff box, the artery is much more superficial. It's right up against the trapezium and the scaphoid bone. And so both axis and hemostasis are much easier and much safer. Our results uh, and experience with distal radial access dates back to April 2016 when we did our first distal radial case. And since then, uh, I started very slowly initially. Uh, I was very conservative, making sure that the technique was safe and feasible. And since then, I've converted almost 100% of my practice of radial intervention to distal radial intervention. And we've done just over 380 cases in Vancouver to date. Uh, I do all of my liver intervention work, distal radial. A lot of my pelvic work I do now are distal radial. And the reason that we're doing that is because I find distal radial to be a lot safer than conventional radial access. And when you look at the safety data for radial access, uh, the major complication rate is less than 1%. And I think with distal radial, it will be even lower. And the reason for that is because distal radial access allows you to access the vessel in a very superficial position. And so both access and hemostasis are much safer. And what we found is that our hemostasis times are significantly shorter with distal radial access compared to conventional radial access. And with our 380 cases, what I've done is I've measured the artery at the level of the anatomical snuff box and in the conventional access site. And what we found is that there's no statistically significant difference in the size of the vessel in the snuff box compared to the conventional site of access. And that's a question that I get a lot of the time. Is the vessel much smaller? Can you use the same size sheath? And the answer is yes, you can use the same size sheath. And no, the vessel isn't small. It's actually the same size. One of the pieces of advice that I give to any operator who's starting out doing radial or distal radial access is to get training. I think training with radial access is the absolute key to successful outcomes. There are a number of pitfalls that you can have with radial access that are translated with distal radial access. I think access for interventional radiologists is the easiest part of the procedure, and that holds for distal radial access as well. I think access with distal radial is easy, especially because it's ultrasound guided. And so it's easy to pick up the anatomical landmarks. And so when I teach people about access for distal radial access, there's a number of key things. The first one is look for the base of the metacarpal of the thumb and the index finger. Move your ultrasound probe more proximally until you see the trapezium under the artery and then the scaphoid. And then you can pick any area between the trapezium and the scaphoid as a safe access site. And if you can, under ultrasound, see the superficial branch of the radial artery, stay distal of that. Research in distal radial access is extremely exciting. And the reason for that is for the last 25 years, interventional cardiology has led in research and outcomes for radial access. And for the first time, radiology and cardiology are leading with regards to research and data collection for distal radial access. 